Longtime listeners to this channel will probably remember the strange tale of the star KIC 8462852, also known as Tabby Star, Voyagian Star, the Alien Megastructure Star, and the WTF Star. For much of 2016 and 2017, the star was on the table as a candidate for an alien technosignature, because the Kepler light curve taken of the star was consistent with what you might expect to see from such a structure. It was only ever a long shot, I said in my first video ever on this channel that it was likely to be natural, but it was an interesting case nonetheless. We now know that the behavior of that particular star is unlikely to be due to anything alien, but rather some odd situation regarding very fine dust in orbit of the star, and other examples somewhat similar to this have since been found, though it's still not entirely clear how the dust came to behave as it seems to. The way this was determined was to examine the star's spectrum and see exactly what wavelengths of light were being absorbed, or had it been a megastructure, then all wavelengths would be blocked as expected from a solid object. As it turns out, in measurements of the absorbed wavelengths, the absorption of blue light versus red were consistent with extremely fine dust, probably in orbit and very cold around KIC 8462852 taking it off the table as a serious contender for something of alien origin. But now we have a situation that's a bit different with a different star, in that it is blocking out light more consistent with a solid object, and it's doing something far weirder than anything Tabby Star did. This is the case of the star Triple V WIT08, with WIT standing for What Is This? In a paper by Lee Smith and colleagues, link below, they detail that during the first half of 2012, the star saw a dramatic drop in brightness to the tune of 97% blockage. This is interesting. In the case of Tabby's star, the largest observed drop in the Kepler data for the star was about 22%. That was huge enough, but to go to 97%, we'd be dealing with something blocking the star's light that is much, much larger than the star itself. The Triple V WIT-08 system is very distant, about 25,000 light years away, meaning that whatever happened at this star happened 25,000 years ago, when humans were very primitive. The days of hunting and gathering, cave paintings, and no agriculture. The system is located in the constellation Sagittarius, though observed from the southern hemisphere at the Vista Telescope in Chile's Atacama Desert. This places the system significantly nearer to the center of the galaxy than we are, perhaps in the galactic bulge itself. That has been advanced with SETI as a good place to look for technosignatures. The star in question is an old giant star about 100 times the size of the sun, but cooler. This is not a young star, and does not have a protoplanetary disk as such, nor is it near a star-forming region, so dust on that level isn't really all that likely here making the whole thing even more mysterious. The occlusion or eclipsing of this star was seen only once in 2012, while the star itself has been observed for many years, as much as 17 years of data are known. That would mean that whatever the object is, it's on a long period orbit, and it's anyone's guess when it might be seen again, though the best guess right now is that it could be centuries before it passes by again. Now here's where things get spooky. With Tabby Star, an alien origin was on the table due to the initial data being a bizarre light curve taken by the Kepler spacecraft, which was a photometer measuring the levels of light coming from stars looking for dips, indicative of exoplanets passing in front of their host stars. Later, infrared data which was taken showed no excess, meaning that whatever the dust is, it's cold. That's still a mystery, but where the alien origin option for that star faltered is when Boyajin and team took more measurements, and saw how light was being absorbed unevenly by the material, which soundly indicated very small particulate matter, very fine dust, in fact, finer than smoke. Had the light been blocked entirely, then it would have remained consistent with a gigantic alien megastructure, and that aspect would have stepped forward. It did not. But here's the kicker. Triple V WIT-08 has already passed that test. The star was observed in different wavelengths, including infrared, and whatever passed in front of the star was described as optically thick, like a solid object. 
but more the observations indicated that the edges of the object were remarkably well-defined and sharp, like you might expect from a giant oblong solid disk passing in front of a star. That should not be, and no one's ever seen anything like this before. But there are a handful of somewhat similar objects known, but nothing quite like this. One of these is Mamajek's object, which was seen to be bizarrely occluding its parent star light in a way that was not initially very clear. As it turns out, the culprit was either a gas giant or brown dwarf with a massive ring system, far more extensive than that of Saturn. But with this particular object, it wasn't optically thick, but rather presented a strange variable light curve that ultimately ended up being due to gaps in the ring system, which incidentally infers the presence of exomoons shepherding the rings. This may be what's going on with Triple V WIT08. Moonlets can create sharp edges, as happened at Saturn. But at the same time, ring systems don't block out light quite like what's going on with a star. So if the explanation lies here, then there is more going on than that. Another similar, but not quite, star is Epsilon Aurigae, where a known disk of dust passes by every 27 years and blocks the star's light to a tune of about 50%. But that looks like dust, and does not show sharp edges or anything unusual. And then there is of course Boyajian Star. But the difference there, again, is that one was not optically opaque, whereas Triple V WIT08 is. Another example that's a bit closer is the star Triple V WIT07, the previous one in the catalog, which is known as the Vista Variables in the Via Lactea, or Triple V Catalog of Anomalous Stars being compiled by the European Southern Observatory. 07 is more like Tabby Star, but not unlike Mamajek Star. The similarity with Tabby Star shows a light curve that varies considerably and irregularly, but much deeper, up to 80%, making it more like Triple V WIT08, but not exactly. What's going on with 07 is unknown, but may be related to what's happening at 08. And there are further candidates for analogs of triple V WIT08, but more data on those is needed. Now that brings us to the nature of the object that passed in front of triple V WIT08. First, it's not clear that the object is in orbit of the star, or a foreground object passing by as a one-off. The latter is a problem because that would require a large population of such objects statistically in order to catch one in the act of passing in front of a star. Not impossible, but not likely either, so it's probably in orbit of the giant star. So if it's in orbit, what could it be? There are some potential natural explanations here, but none are very good. Considered were companion stars, white dwarf disks, brown dwarfs, but none seem to be the case, and all have come with problems of their own. Nor does variability within the star itself fit, given how much light was lost and how it appeared to do it. Some more exotic possibilities have been advanced, such as a black hole or neutron star surrounded by a dense disk of dust that blocks out light almost completely. This is interesting, because it is something thought to be very likely to exist in the universe, but hasn't ever been seen. And this can be studied further through X-rays, which is something the team investigating the star intends to pursue. But fundamentally, each natural explanation so far comes with some sort of problem that makes it seem rather unlikely, leaving no good natural options at this time. That could and probably will change as papers following up on this object appear. And this is where another option can be explored, that the dimming is being caused by an alien megastructure of some type. This is always the last option to explore for several reasons. Aliens aren't a very good explanation because it invariably gets into aliens of the gaps thinking. They can do anything until we actually know what they can, in fact, do, so they can be form-fit to explain just about anything, when in fact the actual explanation ends up being something natural that no one has thought of yet. But once they do think of new options, aliens go off the table, and once again, nature teaches us that it can do all sorts of things as well, likely even more than aliens can. But sometimes the alien option is warranted to put on the table for discussion, and this is one such case. So what activity could aliens be doing that explains this object? Two come to mind that have been presented in speculative science and hard science fiction for many years now. The first is a partial Dyson sphere, presumably for energy collection. 
The problem with this option is that you really don't need a solid partial or complete sphere to do this quite well. You only need a swarm as Dyson actually envisioned it. This would not appear opaque per se, and probably wouldn't cluster in one area, however. The solid sphere concept was first advanced by sci-fi author Olaf Stapledon in the 1930s. This still remains on the table as a speculative technology, but actually engineering such a thing would be an undertaking beyond anything we could even imagine, and even then, there's no guarantee the universe allows such a thing to be stable and last long term. Another option is a Shkadov thruster, where the star is partly encased in a solid sphere in order to create thrust and move the star around, but that doesn't seem to be consistent with triple V WIT 0A. But that also assumes that we've thought of every megastructure that aliens far more advanced than we are might construct. We probably haven't, but again, aliens of the gaps. So what really needs to be done is more study of this object and the data, and more thought put into it as to what it might be, along with looking for more examples of the phenomenon. And that's where it gets complicated. Indirect data might still be collected on triple V WIT 8 but direct data, as in watching a transit again, may not be possible again for centuries, meaning that this could be an open technosignature candidate for hundreds of years. But given that whatever occurred at triple V WIT 8 happened in the distant past, time is not of the essence here. Finding more examples, however, is key. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently musing about what megastructure building aliens might construct that would be so huge. Say we asked them by way of a Medi signal and the response was rather curt. It's our planetary big screen TV. You have those and they keep getting bigger and we've got thousands of years on you. Gotta go. We're watching Glorcon wrestle Blorg the Crusher. Oh, well, all right then. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.